get there, but I do expect to get there. Tomorrow will go mostly cloudy, also mid-70s, and then a little more sunshine this weekend, just a slim chance for a shower. I'm Cairo 7, Pinpoint Meteorologist Nick Allard. It is 63 degrees in downtown Seattle. I'm Ursula Royteen. Miss anything? Follow us on Facebook to get caught up. Cairo Radio 97.3 FM. News and talk. Powered by the Pacific Northwest. The Big Lead is brought to you by 3010 Weight Loss for Life. The Dory Monson Show on Cairo Radio. This is The Big Lead. Coming to you from the Carter Subaru studio. Streaming on Facebook Live. Welcome. Welcome to the big show. Welcome to this Thursday afternoon edition of the Dory Monson Show. Glad you're with us. Um, I heard the news last night that Jay Inslee's dropping out of the presidential race. That means in 12 years, we're all going to die. Because this big blue marble that we call planet Earth, it's gonna melt. I'll be just 69 years old when we all die. So young. So very young. And then between now and then, what am I going to do without Jay Inslee to, to kick around here on the big show, without Jay to talk about? What am I going to fill three meaningless hours of radio with every day? Meaningless because... We're all going to die. Well, Thor, mm-hmm. you know he's running for governor again, right? What? Yeah. He's going to go for a third. And he's going to run for another term? Yeah. As governor? As governor. Of Washington? <laughs> Our Washington. Happy You're kidding me! I have not heard that! Well, if that's the case... I'm going to take this frown and turn it upside down. So maybe we can lead the way globally to save this planet. Maybe I'll see my 70th birthday after all. Thanks, Nicole. That's the pick-me-up I needed to start the show today. That's what I'm here for. I appreciate that. <laughs> I uh, Did you have on your newscasters? I came in late today. I... You had the Jay Inslee's run for governor again? Uh, I did. Oh, I, I couldn't hear your newscast. I missed that. Wow. Okay. I was wondering why you were so glum. Oh, man. man. Well, I obviously, was feeling I like just... Really, I was listening to a funeral in oh, progress. No, not anymore. This is like a party all of a sudden. Go get him, Jay. Okay. Here's uh, that's enough of that. So here's the big uh, thing now. The dominoes are going to start toppling because Inslee was going to be uh, president. Bob Ferguson was going to become governor. Dow Constantine was going to have King County Sheriff's detectives take him out drinking every night. Uh, but but now Inslee's going to stay governor. Fergie's going to stay AG. And Dow Constantine's going to have King County Sheriff's detectives taking him out drinking every night. So uh, so now things are going to be just dramatically different, as you can tell. And I will tell you, a little, did you put a request in to talk with the governor? I did. Okay. I uh, don't... He's going to have all sorts of time now. Why are you... <laughs> He's going to be right on it. Do you think, he, do you think He's his... going to get right on it. Do you think his people will return Nicole's message to come on today? Uh, maybe because it's Nicole. 
All right. Thanks, Ursula. So, uh, <laughs> but we do have, we know that there, are two, yes no, at least. there are two Republicans who are, want to challenge Inslee for governor. The police chief of Republic, right. Lauren Culp, he's going to join us in the big lead at two. Mm-hmm. And then at 1230, State Senator Phil Fortunato is going to join us. Mm-hmm. Okay, but can I, can I, be, and I, those are both solid guests, right, Nicole? You're you're in good with them. I, can't, I am. I can't torpedo you. Their people won't pull out if I say something here. I don't believe so. Okay, here's the thing. Fortunato and Lauren Culp, both nice men. They're not going to beat Ansley. They're not gonna and beat why do Ansley. you say that? They haven't even because had a chance to try. They're just not going to. You you got to have you got to have somebody who's going to be able to bring everybody in the state together. And so this is why I'm a little tortured today as well. Mm. Because I love my radio show. And I've said I would never get into politics. But I guarantee if I did, I would beat Inslee. I guarantee it. I mean, there is not. You know, throw out a challenge like that. You might have people really pushing and you might just have one of those hair-brained ideas well, on a whim, and you're going to jump in. But I doubt that anybody's going to going to try to pull me in, because I don't think the Republican Party in the state is crazy about me. They don't seem to have any affection for me. They really? never Yeah. I mean, the individuals do, but the party, I've, no, I've never had any contact with in my life. So I'm, I'm not a wonky Politico insider. So I, I don't have... No, they, they wouldn't. I don't hmm. think they would support me. But I am I am certain I was thinking about this as I was riding my bike in today that there truly is not the tiniest shred of doubt in my mind that I would beat Inslee. But I love this show. And I, I just I, I can't see doing a job that I know would be tedious and horrible and boring, but but I am starting to feel a larger yeah, if responsibility. You already, if, if you already feel that way though. You really shouldn't run. I know, but I'm starting to feel this tug of responsibility to the people of this state. That uh, too bad you just signed a contract, so we're good. Eh. Contracts <laughs> are made to be broken, sister. So, uh, so anyway, I, I I need to mull this over. I need to I need to assemble my kitchen cabinet to advise me on this. Hmm. But um, <laughs> kitchen. It. Yeah, I got it. I, uh, it's funny because after you make, the, after you've said this a couple times, you know, you get kind of riled up about it, and then you say, "Well, that would be the worst job ever, and I would hate it." I know it, but and then all of look, my family members and friends call me, and they're like, "Oh, he's got to do it. He's got to do it." I'm like, "He's not going to do it." Now I'm going to have to tell him. I now, might do it. I, now look, he's thinking we about it. We can't have homeless drug vagrants all over the streets. We have to have a mental health system that works under Inslee. Ever, or, uh, Western State Hospital got decertified. In fact, I started to say Evergreen State. Why don't we just turn Evergreen State into the biggest nut house in the state since it's already 90% of the way there? We'll get rid of that as a public college. We'll turn that into a nut house. Okay. Western State will be the second biggest <laughs> nut house. So let's just say you did run yes. and you did win. What would be the very first thing that you would do? Very first thing I would do is uh, look at reducing the size of state government by at least, at least 25 percent. I would have uh, massive tax cuts for the people so they could start keeping more of their money since they're giving more to Olympia per capita than ever before in the state's history. And I would first fund, I would first fund roads. And public safety, our cops, our jails, our prosecution, and our schools, of course, because that's congressionally or constitutionally mandated. And the first dollars we spend would go to those three things, and then everything else is optional. And we'd figure out what serves an important role, what doesn't. We would never have to raise taxes because all of those things would be funded with the very first dollars going into Olympia. Uh, Then I would have a mental health system, so all the desperate people who were mentally ill on the streets had some place to go. We would stop allowing legalization of drugs in Seattle and King County, and we'd expand jails. So if people want to shoot up heroin on the streets, we'll put them in the pokey. They can either go get mental (laughs) health, they can get services, we'll get them drug counseling, we'll get them job training, or they can go to jail. But they cannot sit on the streets and shoot up heroin 
And uh, then we'd start investing more in our roads and get away from the insanity that is sound transit. Oh, I got a million and ideas. And now that's a busy that, first day. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> and you made it sound very easy. Well, that but would now all that's... be the first day. <laughs> all the first day. From the 425, you are the chosen one. <laughs> <laughs> I am the chosen one. I was going to say, yes. that right there is your campaign. I have, I have been called by God to save this state from the wretched excess of Democrat politics. But I really love this job, too. So I don't I don't know. I'm going to think about it. I'll talk to my wife about it. I haven't even, I came up with this as I was riding my bike in this morning, but she might not be down. Although, she, wouldn't my wife, in all seriousness, wouldn't she make a lovely first lady? She really oh, would. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness gracious. That would be something, too. And and she would have these uh, causes and initiatives that she would work on as the first lady of the state. We would get... Honestly, I think she could bring everyone together. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. In spite of her husband. <laughs> I, you, know what, you know what? The more I think about this, because all the things I just talked about, I could do that in 10 <laughs> you, days. You forget that you have to work with a bunch of people. You know what? It's not just, I'm going to say this and this is what's going to happen no, and this is going to be done. It will happen. It will happen. During the campaign, everybody's going to see the, the wisdom of all of the planks in my platform, and, and everybody will just come together, and everybody will just say, do whatever you want, Dor. And, and uh, I will. But here's what I'm thinking, because I could do all the things I just talked about in 10 days. We'll immediately defund Evergreen State College. We'll turn it into a, a mental hospital, big mental hospital. We'll get Western State up and running. We'll clear up the streets and provide all the programs needed and then fix all the tra traffic and transportation. And do this with, all, with tax cuts. I mean, it sounds yeah, like you're we'll going to get money magically. Yes. Yeah, because I'm cutting 25% of the state ah. budget. You know what the state budget is? It's about $54 billion. What's 25% of $54 billion? One, uh, $13.5 billion. I'll have $13.5 billion a year. A year! Because of all the cuts that I've made in state government. You heard it right here, folks. Absolutely. The start of his campaign. But here's the thing. The more I think about this, because I, I obviously haven't given this any forethought. <laughs> But I could do all the things I just said in 10 days. So all I would need is a brief leave of absence from this show. It would be like being on jury duty. I'd be doing my civic duty. I'd be governor. You'd have to just find someone you could pass it along to after that first year. Yeah. Like, and you'd step down, but you'd have someone in yes. the wings. Yeah, maybe if uh, uh, Lauren Culp or Phil Fortunato could just take over for me after that, after I get everything cleaned up. Anyway, it's just a thought. I'm just tossing it out there, but we'll, uh, we'll see what happens with it. And why do we need all of these things cleaned up? That is up next in The Big Lead. The Big Lead. Top story. Because our region is the nation's laughingstock, along with Los Angeles and San Francisco, because of the drug vagrant crisis. And there is a seven-minute piece that ran on Fox News that illustrates, uh, and it's a, it's a wonderfully shot and reported uh, piece, but it is all about the homeless crisis in Seattle and how everybody has just lost faith in the system for any of our politicians to do anything about it. Yes, there's a lot more people struggling. You're seeing a lot more homeless than you used to see. So what do you th what do you attribute that to since you've been here? In one word, greed. Okay, one word, greed. I would agree that greed is the main cause of the homelessness, but it's not because you and I aren't spending enough money on it. It's the greed of politicians. The greed of politicians who see homelessness as an issue to be exploited so that they can galvanize more money and power. It is the greed of the politicians that has caused this. Folks living uh, in tents and other structures along the freeway, under the freeway, in really unsafe conditions. We're a very tech center city now with Amazon growing and of course Microsoft being here and other tech businesses. Real estate has gone up, rentals has gone up. People can't hardly afford. What do they do when they can't afford to pay their rent? Many of them end up on the streets, sadly. This isn't a new phenomenon in Seattle. It's just a problem that has gone 
unaddressed for so long. Okay, and why? Again, why? We are spending $100,000 per homeless person per year in King County. I want you to think about that. Do you have a family of four? Maybe you, your spouse, your two kids. You got a family of four. Can you get by on $400,000 a year? Because that's how much we're spending on any grouping of four homeless people. And they're not paying a mortgage. They aren't paying utility bills. They aren't paying taxes. We're spending $100,000 per homeless person per year. And the problem keeps getting dramatically worse. Where's that money going? There's a homelessness industrial complex. There are an awful lot of government employees making six figures off of homelessness. So, yes, it is about greed, but it is about the greed of politics and the failure, absolute failure, of Democrats, frankly. Los Angeles, Democrat. San Fran, Democrat. Seattle, Democrat. Democrat cities cannot deal with the homelessness problem. And that has been proven all around the country. All of the worst homeless cities are run by Democrats. Seattle is experiencing a human crisis right now. Seattle is experiencing a crisis of what happens when people who have have more and more and more. And it makes people who don't have a lot have less and less and none. What actually is happening, people are struggling. People have been suffering for a really long time. And it's pouring out to where now you can't ignore it anymore. And now it's the city's problem. But it has been these people's problems and these people's lives in reality for a very long time. And so, surprise. Well, but here's where I absolutely disagree with how Fox News is characterizing that. Because they say, yes, Seattle has people with more and more and these people have less and less. Again, it's not like we're not funding this. Over a billion dollars a year. For 10,000 homeless people, $100,000 per homeless person per year. So don't tell me that it's about the haves not helping the have-nots. It is about the failure of government, pure and simple. It's obvious. We have a failure of leadership. And that's why Dory 2020 may emerge. And that is your big lead for today. The big lead on Cairo Radio. Okay, I have to tone it down now. I'm going to talk to one of the Republicans who has thrown his hat in the ring. Senator Phil Fortunato. How in the world could he beat Jay Inslee? We'll talk to him next on the Dory Monson Show. This hour of the Dory Monson Show is brought to you by Insulation Northwest. Choose new Leak Armor installed windows from Lake Washington Windows and Doors, and through the end of the month,